Please kneel. O God, who by the passion of Christ your Son, our Lord abolished the death inherited from the ancient sin by every succeeding generation, grant that just as being conformed to him, we have borne by the law of nature the image of the man of earth, so by the sanctification of grace we may bear the image of the man of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated to listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of men. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless for those who have not been told shall see, those who have heard, not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. 
Like a lamb led to the slaughter or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sins of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in the fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord.
lectura. Lectura del libro de los hebreos. Hermanos, Jesús, el Hijo de Dios, es nuestro sumo sacerdote que ha entrado al cielo. Mantengamos firme la profesión de nuestra fe. En efecto, no tenemos un sumo sacerdote que no sea capaz de, conceder, de compadecerse de nuestros sufrimientos, puesto que él mismo ha pasado por las mismas pruebas que nosotros, excepto el pecado. Acerquémonos, por lo tanto, con plena confianza al trono de la gracia para recibir misericordia, hallar la gracia y obtener la ayuda en el momento oportuno. Precisamente por eso, Cristo, durante su vida mortal, ofreció oraciones y súplicas, con fuertes voces y lágrimas, a aquel que podía librarlo de la muerte y fue escuchado por su piedad. A pesar de que era el hijo, aprendió a obedecer, padeciendo y llegando a, la, a su perfección. Se convirtió en la causa de la salvación eterna para todos los que lo obedecen. Palabra de Dios. Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kindern Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to him, Whom are you looking for? They answered him. Jesus he said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, also, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? Jesus answered, I told you that I am, so if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said, I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into his cupboard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Cephas, who was high priest that year. It was Cephas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. 
but Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid who was the gatekeeper said to Peter, He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there warm, keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him. I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gathered. And in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. If I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled, so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own country and chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is the truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, and he said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? 
Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you? I have the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if I had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greatest sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was pre preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out. Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, In order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled that says, they divided my garments among them and for my vestures they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It's finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened, so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. 
And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had come, at first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about 100, 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now, in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. After the homily in English, uh, it will be followed by in Spanish. Father Enrique will do that uh, for a better flow of the thoughts and maybe better understanding. We read from the from the Gospel of John. Um, it's just, just very powerful way he writes about the the passion which Jesus underwent and his uh, and his crucifixion and death. I was struck by the word when in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus uh, was praying. He used to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane for many, many nights and, uh, and, and used to bring disciples into the Garden of Gethsemane. It is said that that was his favorite place for prayer, especially when he goes through something excruciating. So as the uh, Judas brought uh, the uh, San Hedrin and, and Solgius, and then whom are you looking for? Is Jesus of Nazareth, and Jesus said, I am. And John describes and testifies saying that. Then everybody fell down. The moment Jesus said, I am, I am who am. That's the original original word from, from Yahweh, from Moses heard. And so that reality of his divinity is really uh, present at that time, and with the shock of his his utterance, "I am," everybody fell fell to the ground. But still, even though Jesus being divine, being strong, but then he assumed the human form and human predicament, the weakness, and all what our sinfulness, our brokenness, everything Jesus assumed, God the Father sent him to assume. Assume to redeem, redeem each one of us. John, especially in chapter 15, verse 13, kind of give us a clue of the why. Why Jesus died. What was the purpose of his passion? What is the purpose of his, uh, his death? His, his, his clear line there is, Greater love that no man than laying down his life for his friends. So he already taught the disciples that what is greatest love. And this greatest love Jesus did in action by sacrificing his own life. And that is why Jesus, the manifestation of Jesus, Jesus' love as a sacrifice is unmatchable in history. It is the greatest love. We all know a love with sacrifice is always true. And the greatest and the most powerful love that Greater love has no man, no people have, than laying down one's life for his friends. Whenever I reflect on this, always uh, brings home to me. My own classmate uh, was John, who uh, threw his own life into the river in order to rescue rescue two people. 
a mother and a child. You know, without any second thought, the moment he knew they are drowning, he, he was only 22 at that time. He just jumped into the river, and uh, this year we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of it. Uh, friends together in the Zoom, and we have had a lot of stories to tell about him, even though he was only 22, and deeply manifesting Christ in his love, that greater love has no man than to lay down his life for his friends. Or he was not even front as a stranger, but then he sacrificed his life, and the mother and the child was rescued, but then because he was wearing jeans, he was drawn by the whirlpool, and his body was found only 40 hours, 48 hours after. Always stories like that. You know, those uh, stories of heroic sacrifices always bring goosebumps to our hearts and minds, always inspire us, and it'll always challenge us. In the history we know, the, in the United States, Abraham Lincoln was shot and because he stood for truth and against war, against for peace, bringing unity between factions. But he was courageous to face that. And then in history we know Martin Luther King, after against racism and championing for a greater cause of the country, he was shot. We know that. Gandhi from India, where I come from originally, was shot uh, Actually, uh, you know, after the freedom from the British, he was, and he, he died calling, oh, oh my God. So all those are, uh, are, are indeed greatest sacrifices in history. You know, great sacrifices in history, or in, uh, or in El Salvador with Romero. While he was celebrating Mass, he was shot. Even the, even the chalice was tumbled, and he knew he's going to be going to be attacked and killed, and it did for Christ. Drawing inspiration from the powerful sacrifice Jesus did on the cross. There are priests, there are bishops, there are ordinary laymen and women, people who live that life. All those who live that life for sacrifice, they always come closer to the heart of Christ. We find in the first reading today a prophecy of that great sacrifice, a great love. It says that uh, the servant whom the Lord has chosen will be exalted. That servant is a man of suffering. And uh, uh, through, 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 what, through his uh, piercing, in his piercing, that, uh, that we, will be, we will be find consolation and comfort. And in his crushing, that all the sins are crushed. Through his wounds we are healed. So there Jesus become a wounded healer. That's kind of a, kind of a, what we call a paradox. We can wonder, always wonder, how can a wounded person become a healer? But that's what Jesus has shown. When you are ready to take on the suffering into your heart because of your love, because you stand up for greater things in life, and that way you become an instrument of healing, even though you suffer, even though you go through passion, go through the excruciating moments, you actually become an instrument of healing. That's why Jesus becomes the instrument of healing for all humanity. That is, Isaiah has very detailed way he has predicted it. And then we look into the Hebrews, which we read in the second reading. He says, he was a high priest, but he was not a high priest who does not sympathize with the weakness of uh, he did not remain in the high places, but he came, made, became so low, even unto death. So that's where Jesus, assuming the human weaknesses, human brokenness, human sufferings, he identifies with the one of us, in order so that we, we, we open our hearts towards the power of love, towards the power of sacrifice, towards the power of healing, the divine healing. That's why I always believed, I say, that healing is divine and cure could be medicinal. So if we're talking in terms of vaccine, Jesus has provided the vaccine to us for the spiritual maladies in the world. But it's left to us to take. I remember one day in the class, uh, I always had this question is, how come Jesus' death alone can, uh, you know, how can that, that forgive my sins? My sins are my own sins. I need to rectify them. How come somebody else forgive that? How does that happen? 
This, for example, I asked, uh, suppose uh, the, the person has got a stomach ache there, is it enough that I take the medicine? The professor couldn't answer, but he said, I will get back to you later. And then he came back and said, well, the medicine is available. It's left you to take it. So that's where the Jesus gives a great model. He said, I come to give you a model of love. A new commandment, a new model of love. First he did it with the washing of the feet, by humbling, as a humble servant. And today on, good, on Holy Thursday, he, does a, he did as a humble servant, humbling so low that he lift up the humanity with love and service. But today, Jesus comes as a suffering servant. He's ready to suffer anything for the sake of redeeming, for the sake of liberating all of us from the shackles of our own sin and predicaments and inner, inner bondage. So therefore, Jesus becomes a suffering servant for us. So that we in turn become suffering servants. Don't hesitate to suffer. Don't hesitate to take challenges. Don't hesitate to, to embrace what challenges brings into our life. The moment we embrace challenges like Jesus, we become suffering servant and that become a redemptive suffering. That become a healing suffering. That becomes indeed a total wholesome suffering where the brokenness becomes wholeness in our own very lives. And therefore, friends, uh, in the passion narrative we know we know that uh, the voice of truth, Jesus comes as a voice of truth. When Pilate asked, what is truth? And then Jesus could have easily answered, the, the disciples did later, he said, I am the truth, the way and the life. That could have been the straight answer to that. So he did, Jesus did, I am the truth, the voice of truth. Those who listen to the, those who belong to truth, that's the real line says, those who belong to truth will, will listen to my voice, the Lord says. So we all should belong to truth. The moment you belong to Christ, we belong to truth. Then we can hear his voice more clearly and passionately, and then we can follow his voice. And therefore, friends, today, as we commemorate to the Good Friday and the passion of our Lord, he comes to us very clearly that there is no love which is, which is uh, you know, this is a matchless love, the most powerful love which the Lord has manifested. It is said that uh, there are three kinds of powers in the world. The first is the power of uh, military. Generally we say military is powerful to bring down and change things as per the command. And second one is the power of law. The legally things can be done. We live in a legalistic society. Many people use law in order to, you know, exploit and in order to execute that power. But more than the power of military and more than the power of the law is the power of love. Which is, which, if you have any doubt, just look at Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is a reference point in our life. Whenever we struggle through things, he is a reference point. Ask the question, what would Jesus do at this moment? What would Jesus be in this moment? And therefore, friends, uh, we are strengthened all the more when we meditate on the passion. The wisdom of the passion we receive is actually so powerful. The wisdom is not to, not to bring hate in the name of Jesus, no. The wisdom is not to bring a, what we call a, a, a kind, of, kind of a false solution, no. The wisdom of the passion is to gain the power of endurance. As Jesus has gained the power of endurance, as a man of suffering, as a high priest who empathizes, as a man of compassion, and indeed as a voice of truth. And therefore, this passion should make a difference in our life, to stand for truth, to stand for justice, and indeed as people of compassion and people who are willing to suffer. Therefore, my question to all of us, including myself, is, are you willing to sacrifice your future for the future of the church? Jesus did. Are we willing to sacrifice our future for the future of the faith community, for the, for the sake of the Lord? And that much it takes in order to redeem our world and redeem uh, our society, our church, and our families. So continue to ponder on the question, am I, am I willing to sacrifice my future for the future of the church?
Estamos meditando la pasión de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Y en el Evangelio que hemos escuchado de la pasión de San Juan, podemos descubrir tres cosas. La primera es quién es Jesús. Y esto lo vamos a descubrir a través de la fe. En segundo lugar, qué significa el sufrimiento. Y esto lo podemos profundizar a través de la virtud de la esperanza. Y por último, el amor. ¿Quién es Jesús? Cuando buscan a Jesús de Nazaret, los soldados, cuando Jesús está en el huerto de los olivos, y Jesús dice, yo soy. Ellos caen rostro en tierra, porque el decir yo soy, significa que Él es el que es. Es decir, el verdadero Dios, Él es el Yahweh, Yahvé, Él es el Dios Todopoderoso de los ejércitos. Por eso caen en tierra. Pero también tenemos que descubrir en Jesús, a través de la fe, que es verdadero Dios y verdadero hombre. Que el único que puede unirnos entre Dios y los hombres es Jesucristo. Él es el mediador y Él es el puente. El pecado nos separó de Dios. El pecado siempre nos separa. Pero Jesucristo siempre busca a la oveja perdida y Jesucristo siempre nos busca para llevarnos al Padre. ¿Quién es Jesús? Verdadero Dios y verdadero hombre que toma nuestro lugar en lugar de Barrabás. Barrabás significa hijo de Abba, hijo de Papito, hijo de Dios, el hijo consentido. Y nosotros por el pecado nos hemos alejado de Dios. Y sin embargo, Jesucristo toma nuestro lugar muriendo en la cruz. Entonces, ¿cuál es en lo que tenemos que profundizar hoy es en la esperanza. Todo sufrimiento nos tiene que llevar a alcanzar especialmente el cielo. Tenemos a Monseñor Romero, tenemos 24 mártires cristianos en la persecución de los cristeros, tenemos muchos hermanos nuestros laicos, sacerdotes religiosos que han muerto. Tenían la firme esperanza de morir porque iban a alcanzar la vida eterna. Ese sufrimiento no fue en vano. El sufrimiento de Jesús nos lleva a pensar en los sufrimientos de cada uno de nosotros. Ustedes como padres, cuando sufren por sus hijos, buscan lo mejor para llevarlos al cielo. Cuando ustedes como esposos luchan por llevar a su esposo, a su pareja al cielo, ese sufrimiento es un sufrimiento redentor y tiene esperanza, porque quien confía en Jesús jamás quedará defraudado. ¿Cómo podemos saber esto? Solo con el amor. Jesús nos lo dice. No hay amor más grande que aquel que da la vida por sus amigos. Cuando damos la vida por alguien, entonces nuestra vida tiene sentido. Las que son mamás se juegan la vida cada vez que dan a luz un hijo. Los que son papá, todos los días al llevar y proveer lo necesario, se desgastan por llevar a sus hijos al cielo. Y esto significa dar la vida. Dar la vida no significa engendrar. Dar la vida significa que tú transmitas la vida de Dios, que pongas sentido, alegría, amor, esperanza, es decir, la presencia de Dios en tu hogar y en tu familia. Eso es amor. No hay amor más grande que aquel que da la vida por sus amigos. Y hoy en el altar, Jesús se hace presente para dar la vida por nosotros. Es un día de silencio. Pero tenemos que tener la firme esperanza, primero, de que todo sufrimiento que tengamos nos lleva a alcanzar 
la presencia de Dios. A descubrir que Dios nunca nos abandona y está con nosotros. Y sobre todo, que nos ama. Cuando tú te sientes amado, eres capaz de amar. Cuando tú recibes, puedes dar. Si tú no tienes, no puedes dar. Necesitas recibir. Llena tu corazón de amor. Llena tu corazón de Dios. Para que puedas perdonar como Jesús. Para que puedas amar como Jesús. Y para que puedas dar vida como Jesús. No pierdan la oportunidad hoy de ganar la indulgencia plenaria. Todos aquellos que están en esta celebración o vengan mañana a la Pascua, si ustedes comulgan, ofrecen sus intenciones por el Papa, rezan el credo, rezan Padre Nuestro, Ave María y Gloria, ganan indulgencia. Por ustedes la pueden aplicar o la pueden aplicar por las personas a quienes se desaman y ya se nos adelantaron. No pierdan la oportunidad de ofrecer por amor, con esperanza y con fe que alguien llegue al cielo. Por tus oraciones, tu sacrificio y tu amor. We will have a, some solemn intercessions, asking people to stand and kneel at different occasions. If uh, you cannot do that for uh, health reason or what, what have you, uh, you just uh, do what you can. You can stay, remain seated if you wish. For Holy Church. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church, Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the world, and grant that, leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Please kneel. Almighty oh, ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout all the world. May I persevere with a steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the Pope. Let us pray also for our most holy father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who close, chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the people of God. Please kneel. Almighty ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with a favor on our prayers, that in your kindness protect Pope Francis chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand for all orders and degrees of the faithful, 
Let us pray also for our Bishop Johnson, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Let us kneel. Almighty ever living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand for catechumens. Let us pray also for catechumens that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their innermost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us kneel. Almighty ever-living God, who make your church ever-fruitful with a new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that we born in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand for the unity of Christians. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Let us kneel. Almighty ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand for the Jewish people. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in his faithfulness to his covenant. Let us kneel. O my dear living God, who bestowed your promises, on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand for those who do not believe in Christ. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Let us kneel. Almighty ever living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that in, by walking before you with a sincere heart they may find truth that we ourselves being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand for those who do not believe in God. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God that following what is right with insincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Let us kneel. O 
Almighty ever living God, who created all people, to seek you always by desiring you, and by finding you come to rest. Grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you, the one true God, Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand for those in public office. Let us pray also for those in public office that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Let us kneel. Almighty ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the right of peoples, look with the favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, the freedom of religions, may, through your gift, be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand for those in tribulation. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Let us kneel. Almighty ever living God, the comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the praise of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the offertory. As you know, Good Friday offertory is taken for the Holy Land and appreciate uh, your generosity. After the offertory, we'll proceed with the adoration of the, uh, of the, of the wood of the cross uh, that will be brought in procession by the deacons. And uh, so ashes can come and, and take care of the offertory collections.
please stand. For the veneration of the cross, uh, you can come like the communion lines, come near to on both sides and maybe just bow and make a sign of the cross. And please do not touch because of the COVID so that we don't want uh, the touching going on. So you can, the deacons will be there and the priests will venerate and they're followed by deacons. So then you can come in communion lines from the center line and uh, Maybe the ashes can also help, and then followed by people on the side aisle can come and then go back to your seat.
I receive his command and formed by divine teaching we dare to pray. You can pray in your own languages, sir. Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin, safe from our distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, Your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Behold the Lamb of God, and behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to sit under my roof. Holy sir, the word of my sword shall be healed. By the body and blood of Christ, keep us safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who have restored us in life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve us in the work of your mercy, that by partaking in this sacred mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tomorrow will be the the uh, Holy Saturday and then the evening we have the vigil vigil uh, of the Easter that will be at 8 p.m. that is the most important liturgy and the most uh, life-giving liturgy or exciting one and enlightening one so I would ask all of you to be part of it or bring your friends others to be part of this most important liturgy of, of Jesus rising from the dead there is no other mystery so powerful as that. So therefore, please uh, 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 be here tomorrow by 8 p.m. And all, it will be beginning at the outside. So you can still come to the church and then beginning of the celebration, you can go back to the fire, the Easter fire. And therefore, uh, please come and join all these beautiful celebrations. Mañana tenemos la Misa de Pascua, que es la Misa más importante de toda la liturgia, la Misa más solemne y es donde celebramos la resurrección de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. A las 8 de la noche va a ser la celebración, empezaremos con el fuego nuevo, a favor de tener sus candelas, y también tendremos toda la liturgia solemne. Por favor, los esperamos mañana, y aquí esperamos su presencia para que ustedes acompañen al Señor en su resurrección. After in silence, uh, we'll be departing in silence. We'll please and Dickens will Jennifer to the cloth. You can Jennifer it in your own views, and they'll be departing in silence. Vamos a partir en silencio después de hacer una genuflexión. Hoy no hay bendición y salimos todos en silencio. Gracias. Everything came.